He's getting older. He's got eight. Oh, hit the full button. But not wiser. Come with me if you want to live. This is the Lefty Show. Welcome everybody to the Lefty Show, episode number thirty-four. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with you today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thursday, the twelfth of June, in the year of our spaghetti monster. 2014. Welcome one, welcome all to the Lefty Show. Again, glad to be here. Hope to put on a great show for you today. Uh, Got a lot to talk about today. Going to do some news, perhaps some would you rather if things get slow. Um, After, after, of course, a a topical monologue. This whole show is a monologue. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been uh, watching, liking, and favoriting on uh, on YouTube. Subscribing as well, helping the channel grows uh, grow helps the show grow. I thank you all for doing that. Thank you to everybody that's uh, that's been donating as well. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Really, I do. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been doing that. You guys are awesome. Uh, I'm raising dot com forward slash six four three productions is where you go if you want to donate. There's a link in the YouTube description, and if not. Uh, if you don't want to click on that, you can just go to imraising.com forward slash 643 productions. Donations graciously accepted. Thank you, everybody, once again for doing that. Thank you to everybody that has been and will continue to share the Lefty Show with your friend, uh, friends, family, and coworkers. Helping the show grow in a grassroots kind of movement is now easier now that we're on iTunes. That's right. Just go to uh, go to the iTunes store and search The Lefty Show, and we will pop up, and you can subscribe there. And uh, if you want to subscribe manually, just go to leftyshow.podbean.com, and you can subscribe directly to the RSS feed there. And uh, you'll have The Lefty Show in your pocket on your mobile device. Uh, Android, I'm not sure. There's a bunch of different ways to get uh, to get that stuff going on on Android, but we're not on Android um, on any specific Android site. But you can do it uh, directly through Podbean, Lefty Show. Podbean.com, and as always, the iTunes Store. Uh, just search the Lefty Show, and as always, downloads and ratings uh, will help out the show. Uh, immensely, so I'm told. So go to iTunes, download the show, download every show. You want to take every single Lefty Show with you. I've got plenty of shit to say, and you've got plenty of shit to listen to. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, download and uh, and leave some ratings. Thank you to everybody that's been doing that. Uh, I'm really, uh, really happy to see um, the Lefty Show growing on iTunes and growing on Podbean. It's uh, it's really awesome. So, thank you to everybody for doing that. I love you all. Love you all. <clears throat> now, uh, before we get into news or anything like that. Um, there was a topic that I wanted to dis- to discuss uh, last week, and um, uh, I I just I didn't get to it. I haven't gotten to it in the flow of things. But I saw on Reddit the other day, uh, well last week, <laughs> last week, uh, I saw on Reddit that uh, that there was a picture of um, of a prom like placard, a prom a prom card. Uh, in invitational or like notification things sent out from a Chicago public school, high school. And it was, you know, it was some promotional thing. And, and there was a, there was a theme on it. Apparently every, the big thing is now for high school classes to have themes, to have like little mantras that they subscribe to. And that gets attached to everything. Like we are one or I, I don't even know it, but that wasn't a thing when I was going to school, but uh, I guess rank and file high school students now have to have something. And for this particular high school, I believe it was a high school in the Chicago public school system, the uh, the phrase was something to the effect of this is our year or this is our life or something like that. Our is the key, uh, the key word here, because on the uh, on the little notification card that got mailed out, our Okay, our, as in yours, mine, and ours, O-U-R, this is our year, this is our whatever the fuck, apparently, this is our failing at a GED, because our was a, was spelled A-R-E, A-R-E, now it could have been a clerical error, it's possible that this was a clerical error, and I reserve the right to, well, no, fuck that, because I'm going to go on a rant anyway, <laughs> 
<laughs> so it doesn't really fucking matter. This is just a jumping off point. Um, but again, our was turned into ARE. And assuming it wasn't a clerical error, once again, assuming it was not that, because it could be, right? Sometimes you just, you know, you write down on a form what you want to be printed and mass produced. And if somebody just misreads it, if your handwriting is sloppy or uh, for whatever reason, if people get something wrong or if the translation was uh, auditory uh, as opposed to, you know, written down. And somebody said, well, this is our, and they've got a weird accent. This is our year. Oh, R-A-R-E. Okay. So it's possible that it was just a transcription error and not really somebody being that fucking dumb. Whether it be a student, a teacher, or who, whomever was, was writing these things down for, for the purposes of this, of this promotional card. But I'm going to assume that it was somebody being an idiot. And it's okay. We all we all do stupid things, right? We all have that moment where we use the wrong form of there, and sometimes we use the the like the worst, the worst offense. You know, your u u r e or your or their t h e r e i r t h e r e or t h e y apostrophe r e. Sometimes we use the most offensive version of that we get it so wrong that it's just oh motherfucker and we all get that and i'm not i'm not again using things as a jumping off point and that's something a lot of people don't understand about my style <laughs> style ooh, my style my comedy stylings is that you know oh you're ranting about this why are you ranting about that for now look i i start off with a silly thing you know, well, let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll pick Pakistan, right? I, I talk about something heinous that happened in Pakistan, and I, I spin that into like a fifteen minute bit about something else. And to some to some people, that's your fifteen minutes or twenty minutes ranting on Pakistan. It's it's no no no. I use I, I I take a story or something, and then I use it as a jumping off point to speak about a larger issue, or it just transmutes into some completely different thing, some completely different tangent. But I don't think it's fair if I if I start off now I'm going to say um, th this fact that that the wrong the totally wrong, not even like there's a few different versions of our. There's one version and that's it. This is just a completely fuck a, a complete fuck up. And you say oh you you just spent 20 minutes or whatever ranting about some high school prom card. No. <laughs> No, I'm using this as a jumping off point to speak about something else. So that's how I do it. And um, it's not always a rant about the, whatever topic originated. Uh, originated the, the rant or the bit is not it's not the, it's not the entirety of the bit. I'm not that pissed off about Adam Carolla saying he wants small government. <laughs> it's not it's not that big of a deal. Um, but apparently some people have a problem with that. But. Again, we're, let's get it back to this. That we're, we're assuming that this is not a clerical error, okay? So some kid in a Chicago public school wrote down, this is A-R-E-R -E -R year, or this is our night, this is our moment. And that was handed off to somebody for proofreading. Had to be. Because the, the same guy who wrote it down probably did not go to the company to say, look, print this up. I need 500 of these or 1,000 of these to hand out. So this guy, this kid, boy or girl doesn't matter, wrote it down and then handed it off to somebody who was going to go to the printing place, assuming, assuming they don't have printing presses at Chicago public schools these days. So he handed it off and somebody took it and walked it to where they were going and walked it to the printing place. And at no point did they read, or even if they did read it, did they notice, holy shit, this is the fucking, this is the absolute this isn't even the right word not even like this is a wrong version of the word this is just straight up the wrong word and again we all fuck up we all do stuff like that but an egregious fuck up like this is just that's a you're graduating <laughs> your girl you're going to you're going to prom 
and you're getting a, you're getting a little thing that qualifies you to be a police officer now, you are without knowing anything else about this person, again, assuming he's not a clerical error, they are possibly functionally illiterate because they're just so fucked up that they can't help but use the completely wrong. There's no, not even the wrong version, the complete wrong word, just wrong. And, uh, I went through the comments just to see, I just wanted to see what people would say. I wanted to hear the tone of of the uh, of the responses on Reddit or or whatever else you know so I do that for uh, for many articles that I read I go and look at the comments just to get the tone to see what people are thinking about this or that like oh is this the you know who is the blame going to be put on who is the blame going to be placed upon squarely for this egregious fuck up and I had a bet with myself going in and I I said all right I'm going to say it without before I click on it. I'm betting nobody's going to blame the teachers. Nobody's blaming teachers in this. And I clicked. And I saw parents. I saw um, funding. I saw um, I saw standardized testing. I saw the I saw lackluster students. Not once did I see somebody even posit the theory, hey, hey, maybe it's the teachers. Maybe the teachers fucked up. Maybe the, maybe these are just bad teachers. And nobody saw it. No, I didn't see it. Nothing. And I would assume that anybody that dared say, hey, you know, maybe, excuse me, excuse me, is it, po- is it possible that the teachers are bad? That this, is a, that, the, that this is a product not of lazy students, not of bad parents, not of underfunding, not of, not of underpaying teachers, but just shitty teachers. Teachers who are shitty at their job. And yes, there are shitty teachers. There are such things as shitty teachers. They're not all heroes. They're not heroes and educators. They're shitty fucking teachers. Probably a lot of them are shitty at their job. Probably approaching the rate at which any human, any given human in any given profession is shitty at their job. Teachers are no different. Just because they're educators and they're heroes doesn't mean that they're not shitty at their fucking job. And I've got a problem with that because, you know, especially in Chicago with the, in, as part of the Chicago public schools, because just two years ago, yeah, two years ago, These assholes went on strike. Union, these heroes, educators, heroes all went on strike and tried to leverage the future of children against the mayor of the city of Chicago to say, pay us more. We want more, 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 more. And we're not teaching students until we get more because we are heroes. We are educators. We are underpaid. Huh? This is our R-A-R-E year. You, you went on strike for that. That's what you got. And here's my problem because it's a larger issue. Whenever the topic of education comes up, whenever we, you know you hear that that statistic of uh, American students are last in education or 45th in the world in education, whatever the number is, right? Whatever the whatever the hot button number is, because it's always we're shitty. It's not like oh we're in the top three. <laughs> we're pretty good, you know. Um, we showed we or no we placed. Fuck, we we could even show. And I, I, all right, that's good. Some people, some people are just, you know, there's gonna be a bad, there's gonna be, there's gonna be a top, and there's gonna be a bottom. If we're in the top, all right, we don't have to be number one in everything. I'm not that much of a nationalistic a hole. USA, USA, you. I don't do that. I don't think we're the greatest in everything. It's very clear if you listen to this show. Not a, and by the way, if you ever, ever see a crowd of people chanting USA, USA, you run in the other direction. You do not want to be a part of whatever that crowd is doing. I don't care. Don't care. I will leave a crowd if they start chanting you. If I'm watching a, a game or a concert or something and there's you know, the obligatory homage to the troops and then some you know drunken shirtless hick is USA, you'd praise me today, USA, USA, and then everybody, USA, USA, I fucking leave, leave, not going to be a part of that, not going to be a part of that, anyway, um, I, we, we don't have to be number one in everything, America does, it's okay, I, I'm fine with that, 
You know, we're the, oh my God, the most powerful country in the world. Yeah, we're most powerful, but we're not the best, man. Fucking Germany, dude. Cranking out engineers. You know, when you want a performance vehicle, you go to, you go, to German car. You go to a German car. If you want a performance vehicle, Germany is where you go, primarily. That's where, that's the, that's the one where you know, odds are, the odds are, I am going to get the best car. I'm going to get the best manufacturer, the best engineer, engineered, and the best engineering behind the, the, the science behind the car is going to be Germany. Not America, Ford Focus. No, fuck that. Germany is where it's at. If I had the money, I'd buy a German car, but I don't. <clears throat> and a real German car, not, to, not Volkswagen for the people. Fuck that. Mm-mm. Audi, baby. That's where it's at. Um, so I'm okay with that. But whenever you hear or whenever you see, oh, my God, whenever we have this, this crushing self-review, oh, my God, we've got to do something. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We are last in education, 45th in education, whatever. There's always, there's always the blame game. Somebody has to be to blame for the shitty education that students are getting that American students are getting the, 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 the lack of knowledge that we as a populace have has to be blamed on somebody and there's standardized testing, there's funding, there's lazy parents, lazy students, but I never ever hear teachers. Hey, maybe the teachers fucking suck. Did we ever, do we ever think about that? Is it again, we as a society, because we have allowed teachers and, and, um, people with the t- interest of teachers in mind, we've allowed, uh, we as a society have turned against ourselves when it comes to teachers. And we've, we've, we've placed them on this pedestal above everybody else. They are a hero on par with combat troops, right? You, you, you don't, you just don't question them. You don't do it. Try to, every time there's a teacher strike, I was doing it two years ago. Trust me, not fun. Try whenever teachers are on strike, say, why are you on strike from your part-time job? And just look at everybody around you. <gasps> what? What did you say? Well, they're fucking on strike. They're unionized. They've got fucking salary and they get three months off a year. They're a part-time job. They're not full-time. It is not a full-time commitment to be a teacher. They're crying about 45 grand a year being the median fucking income. What do you want? That's golden. Stay golden, pony boy. If you're a teacher, you got it made. Three months off a year, guaranteed union, salary, benefits, tenure. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing. <clears throat> and everybody around you goes, oh, oh, oh. What did you say? What did you say about teachers? Because how dare you question teachers? How dare you question the compensation given to people that get a mandated three months off a year? Now, I don't care that you, oh, you got to go to conferences and kiss my balls. You go to conferences, you get drunk, and you find some strange. That's what you do. That's every conference is like that in every profession. Oh, you got to go to some business conference. Right, you go there for a couple hours and you hit the bar and try to find some strange. Teachers do the same fucking thing. It's not any different. They're not brain surgeons. Fuck, even brain surgeons try to find strange. But teachers, apparently, we cannot question. We cannot dare to question the motivation, the ability, the compensation of teachers. And... I think we're missing out on a pretty big portion of perhaps why we're last in education or what, again, whatever, not necessarily last. Maybe that's why. Maybe the ability to unionize and tenure, and luckily the state of California got it right, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's wrong, but a state of California court recently ruled uh, a California state law concerning teacher, teacher tenure, basically establishing uh, tenure for, for teachers, unconstitutional. No more teacher tenure in the state of California. And I thought, ooh, all right, that's interesting. And everybody's, oh, oh, how could you do that to teachers? They are educators, they are heroes. Is it possible that they just suck at their job? 
When you talk about when you when you see a picture on Reddit from a high school graduating class talking about their prom, this is our A R E year or whatever, or you or you see functionally speaking, American students are thirty eighth in the world in terms of practical knowledge about how the world works, however you decide that. Is it possible? Yeah, funding may be an issue. Okay. Lazy parents, certainly an issue. Trust me on that. I won't I won't do that there. I, I won't I won't argue with you with that there. Coddling students, coddling kids, probably a very big issue as well. But that doesn't mean that you can just say, oh, and teach no, 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 not teachers. No, 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 it's not the teachers. No, no, not the teachers. It's all these other things that we need to take care of first before we even think to look at teachers. And I and to me that just seems totally wrong because when your internet is slow, when you pay for internet, good internet, right? And your internet is slow or down for an extended period of time. You don't say, "Oh, well, you know, it's weather, the uh, it's been cold, it's been windy, maybe something somewhere." No, you call your ISP immediately and go, "What the fuck?" Prove to me that this isn't an issue on your end first. Then when they tell you, look, there was a storm last night and a bunch of trees fell down across our lines. We're working to get it back. Then you go, okay. You look for secondary and tertiary causes only after you speak to or or investigate, quote, investigate, the people that have the primary access to what it is that's fucked up. You don't say immediately, there was a car accident. You don't immediately, if you get hit by some dude, you don't immediately look around and be like, oh, well, the sun was out, it was raining, it was da-da-da. You go, what the fuck, man? You hit me. What are you doing? But in education, educators, I would seem to me, are the primary people. First up. Batting first, top of the batting order. But we, go, we will blow right past them because they're educators. They're heroes. No, they're not fucking heroes. They're people like you or me running a scam and a pretty damn good one. Non-full-time commitment, part-time commitment for a salary, benefits, and a union. Not bad. Not bad at all. They're people just like you and me. And those people are likely to be shitty at their job because we're humans and we're lazy bastards. We're lazy. We get, you know, we get in a groove and we just clock out. We shift into neutral and we just start punching tickets, man. That's what we do. It happens everywhere. It happens fucking everywhere. Now, if, the, if you want to make teachers teaching an actual profession and have an ethical review board and a standards board governing teachers and actually punish teachers who fuck up and have shitty classes because, oh, I don't know, maybe it's your fault that you have a shitty class. Oh, it's the textbook. It's the funding. It's the students. It's the parents. No, you. Let's look at you first. You first. You're not a hero. You're an educator. No, we're going to look at you first. And then only if we determine you to not be at fault for all this shit, then we'll look around at everything else. But we don't do that. No accountability for teachers. We try to offshoot (coughs) or off place accountability onto other nebulous things. Funding because, oh, my God, funding, 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 funding. It's easy to cry funding. Oh, my God, just give us more funding. Well, (laughs) We can't do it. <laughs> That's just not going to work, right? It's easy to say, oh, well, we, it, funding's the issue. Funding's the issue because it places it a couple orders of magnitude away from you. Nothing you can do. You just have to hope it places the, it, it places the onus on the legislators and the powers that be to see where the public money goes. It places the, the burden squarely on their shoulders and you don't have to deal with it anymore. You being the parent, being the student, being the teacher, being the administrator of the school. You don't have to deal with it. You, oh, it's them. It's them. It's them. Oh, oh, thank God it's them. I don't have to look, look myself in the mirror or look my underlings or my underthings in the mirror and, and have an honest discussion about who sucks at what. It's time that accountability starts being applied universally here. You want to place... And, and again, don't confuse the issue. Don't get it twisted, all right? Funding is certainly an issue. Certainly an issue. And 
standardized testing, probably an issue. Because here's the thing with standardized testing. When they say standardized testing is the issue, because teachers teach to the test, and that's an issue. And I say, no, that seems to me to not be a test issue. You're, you're missing the point. The test is the test. That's what it's going to be. The test has to be standardized because there's fucking millions of kids taking it. It's got to be. We, what the fuck do you want? So the, the test is not the issue. The issue of teaching to the test, that's a teacher issue. That's a, it, it, oh, my God. It's right there. People stumble right over it, but they're so god-awful stupid. Or teachers have positioned themselves so brilliantly. Maybe I should tip my hat to teachers in general and say, you know what? Fucking A right, man. I cannot say word one a negative about you or question you at all without being shouted down by the masses. Because teaching to the test, I, I look at that and I don't fault the test and I say, well, why are you teaching to the test? Well, because that's the test, right? But shouldn't you just teach? And if, you, if your students can't pass the test, again, I'm looking at you, not the test. All, things, all other things being equal. If you give fourth graders an integral calculus test, I get that, right? Okay. But if we assume the test is reasonable, in any way approaching reasonable, well, then I look at the teacher and I say, well, why are you teaching to the test? Well, because that's what I need to do. do, 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 do. Well, maybe you, maybe you should just be a good teacher instead of teaching to the test, instead of arbitrarily trying to inflate the appearance of knowledge in your, in your students. You actually impart some goddamn knowledge to them. How about that? We look at you first. The test second, maybe. Maybe the test second, but you first. But uh, until such, until now, I, I mean, I haven't seen it, and it's certainly not something that's at the at the front of the minds of America, because education is a big deal. But never once have I heard somebody say, "Well, maybe we should hire better teachers. Maybe we should vet teachers better, and introduce some account, some way to some accountability to teachers. Maybe tenure isn't a good idea." Because that incentivizes them to just kind of clock out and just shift into neutral and not educate. It, 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 if, if anything, tenure is what incentivizes teaching to the test. Because as long as you've got, as long as your kids make the grades, then you're on the, on the fast track to getting tenure. And then you're all good. Nobody, you're, you're untouchable, pretty much. Maybe we should, again, I want to hear somebody... Not just me, some asshole on the internet. I want to hear somebody somewhere say, it's not everybody else, it's me. Or, let's look at these people. Let's make these people accountable. An affirmative proclamation of accountability. And say, we are going to make them... Not, no, 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 not we're going to make terrorists accountable for their actions. Not that, because it's, it's easy to say evil is evil. I'm saying, you know what? Yeah, it sucks that you don't have a job and you're on welfare... But we're going to make you accountable. And one of the ways we're going to do that is you're going to be drug tested. We're going to make sure you're not smoking pot or smoking crack or shooting up heroin or smoking meth while you're on the public dole. We're going to make sure of that because it's our money, not yours. We're, there's going to be some accountability. Furthermore, we need to address education. But we're not going to do it in a roundabout way by funding and gerrymandering and, and all this stupid bullshit and... and and um, standardized testing. We're not going to do that. We're going to look at teachers. And we're going to properly vet teachers. And we're going to make sure that teachers are held accountable. Because they're not fucking heroes. They're people like you or me. And we are held accountable at our jobs. Teachers need to be held accountable at theirs. For too long, it's been, oh, everything but teachers. No, there's no account. Oh, well, uh, uh, don't worry, teacher. Oh, please don't strike, teacher. Please, 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 please don't leverage my child's future in education for more money so that you can continue your hustle. Uh, please, 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 please stop crying about the $45,000 a year median pay that you get for a part-time job. Please, 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 please stop. Okay, well, look at everything else. What do you want, more money? You want more funding? You want easier standardized tests? What do you want? What do you want? Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. We got to give it to teachers because they're heroes and educators. No, 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 no. I'm going to institute a review board when I'm president. <laughs> There's going to be a review board 
We are going to make teaching an actual profession. You are going to be, you want to be a professional educator? All right, now you're a professional. Now there's an ethics board. Now there's a standards board. And we'll fuck you up if you're not doing it right. Ten years gone. Say hello to the, say hello to the review board. Say hello to parents being able to submit you to the review board. Say hello to that. How's that for a little accountability? But somehow, somehow, I don't think that uh, that will uh, that will really fly in uh, <clears throat> in um, in America. Somehow, I, j- I just don't think I don't think it'll work. All right, let's uh, let's do a little news, shall we? I like that idea. Oh, yeah, we got a lot to talk about today. In the news, Governor Rick Perry is, uh, you know, some people saying he's sticking his foot in his mouth. Uh, Others not. We're going to discuss that uh, a little bit. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about uh, the U.S. resuming drone strikes in Pakistan. Uh, There's solar flares freaking the fuck out, everybody. India news. And uh, and a lot more along the way to come, as we as we do the news with Lefty. Am I forgetting anything? No, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, maybe we'll talk a little bit about um, NASA's new plan for an, uh, for a Star Trek like spaceship. It looks pretty cool. Anyway, the news with Lefty. Here's the deal: Governor Rick Perry. <clears throat> this is uh, from the San Francisco AP. Texas Governor Rick Perry drew a comparison between alcoholism and homosexuality during a talk Wednesday night that focused mainly on the economy. Perry's comments to the Commonwealth Club of California came after Texas's Republican convention on Saturday sanctioned platform language allowing Texans to seek voluntary counseling to, quote, cure being gay. The San, Francisco, uh, the San Francisco Chronicle reports that in response to a question about it, he said he did not know whether the therapy worked. Perry, who has been mentioned as a possible 2016 presidential contender, was then asked whether he believed homosexuality was a disorder. The paper says that the governor responded that, quote, whether or not you feel compelled to follow a particular lifestyle or not, you have the ability to decide not to do that. He said, I may have uh, the genetic coding that I'm inclined to be an alcoholic, but I have the desire not to do that. And I have the I I look at uh, the homosexual issue the same way. End quote. Now, everybody's up in arms about uh, about Rick Perry. And, uh, you know, this is the same guy who did the... <laughs> this is the same guy who did the, that little YouTube video. I think one of the... It wasn't the most disliked YouTube video because they disabled ratings and comments pretty quickly. Um, Friday by Rebecca Black, I'm sure, is probably the most disliked YouTube video in existence. But Rick Perry's probably would have been on there during the 20... Uh, 20 12? You're right. During the 2012 um, Republican candidate search, and he said, uh, you know, it doesn't take a, uh, you don't have to be in the pew every Sunday to see that, you know, it's wrong that children aren't allowed to openly pray in schools, but gays can openly serve in the military. And that's just, you would, I don't know what Rick Perry would have done, if anything, in that, um, <clears throat> in that Republican run, but that just killed it. <laughs> I mean, you can't be that Republican. That that's that, rein it in, Rick. Come on now. That's that's a little bit too hardcore. A little bit too much of a hard line. But um, but here's here's the thing about what Rick Perry said. Again, I may have the genetic coding that I'm inclined to be an alcoholic, but I have the desire not to do that. And I look at the homosexual issue the same way. Now, what's interesting here is to note that Rick Perry may think that he may actually be, and this is contrary to what uh, many, you know, anti-gay people, I don't want to say conservative or Republican, but people who who view homosexuality as as being morally uh, morally wrong, um, they, uh, something they do is they, they don't really, they're not really open to the notion that um that being gay is a is a genetic thing it's just a, you're just it, it's just part of your genetics you just are gay you don't choose to be gay you just are it's just the a, a fact of life and i'm sure i'm pretty sure my cursory research confirms again emphasis on cursory research 
uh, confirms that that has been borne out in science, that they believe they found the, quote, gay gene, the gene that, that creates at least a propensity for homosexuality. And right it's like it's like getting mad at a guy because he's black or white or whatever stop being black stop it and that's what a lot of anti-gay people do is they say no this is wrong this is you're choosing to you're choosing this lifestyle this lifestyle is wrong rick perry here i don't know if it was intentional but again when he said i may have the genetic coding that i'm inclined to be an alcoholic but I have the desire not to do that. And I look at the homosexual issue the same way. Lumping in homosexuality with alcoholism, while, while on first blush, may seem unseemly. It may seem backwards and archaic. But I think what he's really saying is, look, homosexuality is a genetic thing. And you, you, know, you don't choose to be gay. I get that. But... I, I mean, the thing to take away from this, I think, is that Rick Perry is saying, look... You know, homosexuality is a genetic issue. It, it, it is a, uh, he'll say it's a disorder, but being gay is genetic. And that's an important thing to walk away from this. Uh, surprisingly, despite it, despite it being wrapped up in a whole, you should, you should still try to go against your genetics because it's icky to me. I don't like it. It's ugh, gay, ugh, gay, gee. But, uh, you know, despite this message being wrapped up in that bullshit, I think it's a surprisingly progressive view from an anti-gay person who says, I, who, who at, at least um, unbeknownst to them, acknowledged that being gay is, is, a gen, is it's on the genetic level. Homosexuality exists. It's not a lifestyle choice. I mean, I'm, I'm sure people can choose to engage in homosexuality, homosexual sex. That's that's a choice. It's an active choice. But being attracted to somebody and just being homosexual, just like being heterosexual, it just is. I choose to have heterosexual sex, but I am attracted. My sexual drive, my desires are they just are heterosexual. Sex is a choice. It, it, it just is. We have we have a term for sex that is not by choice, and that's rape. People choose to have sex, thus people choose to have homosexual sex, but to whom they are attracted to, that's just, it fucking is, man. And, you know, again, you can't have a backwards archaic douchebag like this in the, in the White House. It's just, it, it can't happen. A guy who makes a political campaign video saying, it's wrong that my kids can't pray in school. I don't want you, I don't, I, no. You had your chance 50 years ago. From 50 years ago going backwards, that was your time, Rick Perry. That was your time. It's no longer your time to be this kind of person. It's no longer this, it's no longer your time. You can be, oh, I, I should, I should tread, go back a little bit. You can be this person all you want, but it's no longer your time to be in the White House. No longer your time to lead a nation. Some say the most powerful nation on the planet. Not your time anymore. We are now, now it's time for us to look forward rather than backward. It's time for us to say, look, let's move away from some of these backwards bullshit things. Let's move away from the whole, you know, I'm against homosexuality. How the fuck are you against dudes banging each other? What did, what is your... How fucking conceited do you have to be where I don't like them homosexuals having sex with each other? Well, okay, fucking Billy Bob Joe Danny Frank. Fuck you. Who cares? I don't care that two dudes want to blast each other. Or two chicks want to, you know, whatever they did, whatever it is they do. I don't care. It's not, I, I'm against it. I'm against you doing this thing that, that doesn't affect me that's not objectively immoral it's not it's it's sex it's homosexual sex homosexual sex is just part of the zeitgeist baby it's part of being human it's part of being an animal animals have homosexual sex have done it for millions of years eons that's just a thing i'm against it wait fuck you we're we're, we're moving away from all that 
We're moving away from the whole, you know, I have to be seen at church. I'm going to use my religion as a prop. I have to speak to God in order to find out how to lead the nation. No, no, no. We're moving past that. It's time for us to go Star Trek, not Star Wars. Star Wars, they wanted to be the fucking, the Jedi. Oh, the Jedi lead us. The Jedi, it's a religion. That's religion. Now, the Je- of course, Jedi opinions, the good guys, etc. <clears throat> but the, the Jedi's leading, painted as the, as the protagonists and the objective good guys, right? No, there weren't bad Jedi's, except for that one. But he wasn't a Jedi. He was a Sith. And that whole thing governed a lot by religion. There's a lot of mystic and, oh, God, what is the, the force is, is religion. Now, they tried to, like, tamp that back with the metachlorians. It's a, it's a biological thing as opposed to metaphysical. Um, but it's metaphysical. It's a, it's a thing, especially with the whole ghosts that show up. Uh, in the in the first three movies or the last three, I guess. So Star Wars, I I look at it like this: Star Trek, atheist. Star Wars, theistic. It, there's no there's no place for an atheist in the Star Wars universe. The Star Wars universe, at least as shown in the movies, is primarily governed by theists, right? The fucking Jedi's religion, but Star Trek, which seems to be pretty good, pretty cool. Not, not a religious folk, not a religious, you know, it's more of a uh, communistic and atheistic kind of thing. And I want us to move towards that. It's no longer time for, oh, I need to know, I need to know what God thinks about this. I need to know what God thinks about killing brown people. We need to, we're going to move away from that. You've had your time. We've had, we have allowed religion to govern us for centuries we've allowed it to happen shit for fucking thousands of years for millennia we have allowed ourselves humans society to be governed by religion now it's time to start moving away from that not to immediately remove it i mean you could you could outlaw religion completely just outlaw it fuck it and fuck you no more no more that's it and in a couple generations there will be there will be children who grow up to be world leaders and and um, members of society who don't even know what religion was, and they're just they're they're governed by their own internal morality and philosophy and all this stuff, and probably a lot of ills that we see in the world will disappear along with that. But is that really the kind of change you want? Is forced change the kind the best kind of change? Or could we just kind of just, you know, just we're going to just nudge. You nudge the ship, okay? A lot of people like to think that they are piloting SS humanity, right? Imagine humanity as a gigantic fucking ship, and we're all on it. And a lot of people like to think that. They like to think, oh, well, I'm on SS humanity, and I might even be piloting this ship. Yeah, all right. But we're not. SS humanity is a concept. Humanity is a concept. We are all figurative tugboats just kind of nudging it in different ways. Nudging SS humanity in different ways. Nudging SS, fuck it, not humanity, SS human experience. How, how's that? We, we are not on the SS human experience. We are tugboats trying to nudge the SS human experience into different ways, into a different path. Are we pushing it towards a storm, moving it away from a storm? Look out, rogue wave! Fucking, I don't know, what, what, would, be a, what would be a rogue wave in this metaphor? I don't even know. Rogue wave, uh, cataclysmic event, um, religion, rogue wave, or, or uh, some kind of world war, perhaps? Something, oh, look out, Nazis! <laughs> there it is! Look out, Nazi rogue wave! Ooh, shit! Oh, God damn, we gotta fucking... Is everybody all right? Is everybody okay? Can we recover from that? Or or is is the Nazi rogue wave going to capsize SS human experience? Oh, no, all right, we're good. Woo! Okay, all right. Look out, hippies! Ah! Right? And 
that's how I view it. And it's time, you know, for too long, there have been a lot of religious tugboats that are pushing, that are pushing human experience in a, in a certain way. And I say, no, it's, it's now time. Now we need more atheistic tugboats. It's now time for us to move, move human experience away from that, those clouds on the horizon that are, that are the future of a, of a religiously governed nation, of a religiously governed society. It's time to move a little bit away from that. Not Again, not hard to port, not hard to starboard, not reverse thrust, re- reverse full. No, just, eh, just nudges, just nudges. I'm going to nudge. I'll nudge. That's it. I'm happy with nudging. Maybe if this grows, if the show continues to grow, my nudge will be a little bit more powerful than the average person's, but not by much. Keep in mind the human, human experience is a gigantic fucking ship. And I'm just a regular old tugboat. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a little bit larger and my pushing will just be a, just a, eh, just a little bit. But that's all. Nothing big. None of us, none of us can, nor probably should we, have the power to wrench the wheel of SS human experience in any which direction. We probably shouldn't have that power. And radical change is probably not the best kind of change. Especially because it might serve to kind of muddy the waters about your message. When you just say, fuck it, no more religion. You say, well, you're persecuting religion. You have to persecute religion to fight religious persecution. It's the same thing when I talk about racism and the, uh, you know, and, and, and quotas and, uh, and affirmative action, that's racism. Using racism to fight racism doesn't work. It can't work. It doesn't make any sense. That's what affirmative action is attempting to wrench the wheel of humanity away from bad things, objectively bad things. Viewing people as simply inferior because of the color of their skin and knowing nothing else about them is wrong and not good for humanity. However, wrenching the wheel of our ship to move us away from that, I'll, again, now literally using racism to fight racism, it, it's not going not gonna to do well. So let's nudge humanity in a certain way. So Rick Perry and your, and your ilk, I don't, uh, I, don't think we, I, don't, I don't think it's your time in the White House anymore. N- your, not your time in first the White House, then, then governance altogether. And it might take a few generations, and I'm okay with that. In other news, this is from Al Jazeera. U.S. resumes drone strikes in Pakistan. A missile strike from a suspected U.S. drone has targeted a compound in a northwestern tribal district in Pakistan near the Afghan border, killing at least 10 people. Pakistani intelligence, uh, Pakistani intelligence officials have said. <clears throat> Thursday's attack came after a drone strike in the same area in north uh, Waziristan, marking the resumption of the CIA-led program in Pakistan after a nearly six-month hiatus. The Pakistani government condemned the strikes when the, uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs statement calling them a violation of Pakistani sovereignty and territorial integrity. And that's what it is, man. I, look, <clears throat> I rail on Pakistan a lot and, you know, countries like that for being backwards and archaic and stuff. But um, Pakistan's a sovereign nation. Backwards or not, right? Whatever their internal politics, whatever their internal views towards women, whatever their internal society does, Pakistan is sovereign. And they have a territory that says, this is ours, and we have the authority, we are the king of this area. And you, you leave us the fuck alone unless we say that you can come in here. Because this is our area. We have this. And the United States is just saying, fuck that. <laughs> fuck you. We are going to go. Now, does Pac- again, I'm not up on uh, international politics or at least Middle East politics as, as well as I should be, perhaps. Now, does Pakistan harbor terrorists? Do they like the Al-Qaeda and Taliban operating within their borders? I don't fucking know. I'm going to assume No. I, they may commiserate with them on a religious level, but to that level of extremism, he's, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't like that. We're not down with that. Get out of here. We don't like it. But the, the United States is going into Pakistan, a sovereign nation, violating the territory 
the integrity of the territory of the sovereign nation of Pakistan and saying, no, we are going to police for you. We are going to strike against these people. Perhaps your citizens, because we're the fucking USA and fuck you. Are, are we declaring war with, with Pakistan? No, 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 we're not. No, no war declared at all. Not a congressional act. And that's the thing that some people don't get. We're, well, it's war, man. It's war is war. Uh, war never changes. I like that game too, but no. It's not the, you're muddying the waters in the use of the term. I'm talking about declaring war. An official statement from a sovereign nation, from one sovereign nation to another, we declare war on you, changes the game completely. Yeah, you want to call combat war? Fine. But war does not necessarily equal war. There's a, there's a declar declaration of war. So yeah, the war in Afghanistan isn't really a war. It's combat operations. You're just using different terms. The, the thing, the important thing, is that we, the people, our government declares war on people. We say you. And that allows us to do a whole bunch of things. Yeah, War Powers Act. It's war. In the Constitution, it says, here's how you declare war and go to war. That's, how you, that's the only thing this thing can do, this federal government, this thing of ours. This government of ours. The only thing, the only way they engage in combat is by a declaration of war, a formal declaration. And that's a big deal because war is a big deal. You know, you can't just fly drones or it, 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 something. I find something offensive in the attempt, just the everything that comes with fuck you, fuck your country, fuck your sovereign territory. We are the United States of goddamn America. And we're going to start killing these people because we think we think we have a beef with them. And we're going to do it with drone strikes with fucking huge missiles that are just going to fly in and kill people indiscriminately. Surgical strike my ass. It's a fucking missile. And I got to, I just, something about that offends me. And I don't want to throw my lot in with that. I, I you know, there's a picture on this, uh, on this Al Jazeera story <clears throat> of a bunch of people throwing their hands up at an American flag being burned. And the initial, your initial inclination might be to think, oh, well, those people are the, they like the Taliban. No, those are people people of the sovereign nation of Pakistan saying, stop interfering with our internal strife, America. Fuck you. If we want you in here, we'd say so, but we don't. If you declare war, fine. We'll declare war right back and let's have at it. But you haven't done any of that. You're just coming in here and fucking with us. Without, and that's just not cool. And I would agree with that. You, you know, yeah, the bad guys, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, bad guys, bad guys, bad guys, bad guys. Fine. Declare war and go get them. No? Well, then I got nothing for you. Because we need to respect, to some degree, the sovereignty of nations. Pakistan is, as a society, in my view, is, is, some, is pretty much backwards and archaic. Okay. But they're, they're the sovereign nation of, of, of Pakistan, and they're free to do that because they're a sovereign. At the state of Alabama is a sovereign state that laid down some of its rights to create the federal government. But if Alabama says, we don't like this, or Rick Perry, the governor of, of the state of Texas, the sovereign state of Texas, says, we don't like gay marriage... We don't like homosexuality. We don't like homosexuals getting married. We are going to alter our sovereign constitution to say that's not okay. Well, that's the sovereign state of fucking Texas, man. What do you, what do you want? At some point, as backwards as our, and archaic as somebody might be, as bad as the bad guys might be, you've got to respect sovereignty. Because without that, well, then what the fuck? What are we if there isn't a line drawn where we say, look... We are going to respect you mutually on this level. We are one sovereign nation, the United States of America, speaking to another, in so another sovereign nation, Pakistan. And we don't like what's going on in here. And we're going to ask you to do something about it. 
Then we're going to tell you to do something about it. And if you refuse to do something about it, then we're going to go to war against all of you. And that's what's just going to happen. But in, And that shows, despite being caustic, a mutual respect for the thing that makes us a thing. <laughs> The, the thing that makes Pakistan Pakistan is their sovereignty. The thing that makes us, us, well, even the federal government isn't a sovereign. The things that makes Alabama, that makes Delaware, Vermont, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Nevada, wherever you are, it's a sovereign nation it, or a sovereign state says we are the thing here. And we laid down some of our rights to create the federal government. But when you just go in and say, fuck it, fuck, it, fuck that and fuck them, fuck their sovereignty, fuck their territory, fuck it, we're just going to go in and start killing people because we believe they're harboring bad guys. I, I'm not doing that. I can't get behind that. No. No, 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 no. That goes against, in my mind, that goes against some of the core tenets, some of the central tenets upon which this country was founded. You respect you respect sovereign liber- liberty just as you do individual liberty. To me, the two are, are not equal, of course, but approaching the same. But here we are just, ah, fuck it, drone strike them. Nah, we're going to get them. We just got to get them. All right, in, uh, in another piece of news as we, uh, as we wrap up the show, <clears throat> this is uh, from ABC News. Solar flares disrupt communications on Earth could send shockwave on Friday the 13th. <laughs> Um, This is from Colleen Curry. Uh, The sun has had three major solar flares on its surface in the past two days that have affected communications on Earth uh, and could send a a shockwave through Earth this Friday, according to the National Oceanic and uh, and Atmospheric Administration. The solar events caused brief blackouts and high-frequency communications when they struck twice on Tuesday, uh, twice on Tuesday morning and once this morning, all between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Solar flares are bursts of radiation on the sun's surface. Bursts of radiation. Uh, the, The disturbance to Earth's atmosphere can disrupt GPS and communication signals, according to NASA. One of the flares created a, quote, coronal mass ejection, end quote. How fucking cool. It's bad, I think. But how fucking cool is that sound? A coronal mass ejection. Coronal mass ejection. That actually could come into contact with Earth on Friday, according to the NOAA. The ejection is essentially a huge cloud of plasma that could hit the Earth and cause a shockwave affecting communication systems. If an ejection were to hit hit Earth on Friday, scientists expect it would only cause a minor geomagnetic storm. Oh, oh, excuse me. Only a minor geomagnetic storm. I don't know if that's really a big deal, but it sounds fucking cool, according to the NOAA. The flares were observed by NASA, which posted stunning photos and videos of the events on its website. And uh, <clears throat> and it, this is playing music, so get the fuck out of here. Um, you know, it, we talk about all this bullshit, right? I, um, in India news, uh, a fourth woman dies in, in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, a post uh, a postmortem confirmed death by hanging, but did not find she was raped as the 19 year old's family alleged. Oh, at least she wasn't raped, right? At least the female in the Uttar Pradesh found hanging, death by hanging. At least she wasn't raped. Thank God. A day earlier, another woman's body was found hanging from a tree in the state. The gang rape and murder of two girls found in similar circumstances last month sparked outrage. Correspondents say more cases are now being reported. More cases of gang rape and death in India. And that's India news for you. But we look at all this shit. You know, Rick Perry and alcoholism versus homosexuality and, and the U.S. Re- resuming drone strikes on some poor bastards and some poor ladies in, in, in another backwards archaic country are getting murdered for being women or raped or whatever the fuck. And all these bad things happening or, or, or cool things. You know, the NASA unveiling a Star Trek-like spaceship. And it looks really cool. You know, fund the. Why aren't we funding this? Please fund this thing. It's so cool. But there's pictures on this ABC News website of. Uh, let me find it here. Of. Uh, oh, no, I had to close it because it was playing news. There's pictures of the sun and the coronal mass ejection 
and talking about a solar flare and oh, it's going to fuck with communications maybe. And we uh, we got news um, that we observed a gamma ray burst that was like 13 billion years old or something like that. Or we observed a gamma ray burst from another uh, another galaxy. And it it kind of it gives a different perspective because, you know, people being backwards and murdering females in India or Pakistan or killing Pakistanis with drone strikes or, or Governor Rick Perry and alcoholism and homosexuality. That shit doesn't fucking matter if the sun says it doesn't matter. So the, I, again, I'm personifying the sun. The sun isn't actually a thing. But if the sun, by way of a gamma ray burst or a huge coronal mass ejection, says, guess what, Earth? Your shit doesn't fucking matter anymore. It doesn't fucking matter. This show... What I have to say, my voice, my attempt to nudge the SS human experience, it doesn't matter. It's, it's <laughs> Fuck it. It can all be over in eight minutes. In the time it takes, the radiation, a huge burst of radiation emitted from the sun to get to planet Earth, it could all be over in eight fucking minutes. All this shit. All these things our, our, our society of shaved apes is doing doesn't really matter. It's all, it doesn't inherently matter. And I guess this is more <clears throat> of a philosophical rather than an objective point. It has no inherent meaning. It has no inherent value. What I have to say being right or wrong on this issue, the minimum wage, homosexuality, whatever, none of it has inherent meaning. It doesn't. The only thing, the only reason reason it has meaning is because we exist to give it meaning. It wouldn't mean anything. Women's rights, homosexuality, alcoholism, all these things are human constructs, primarily. They are things that we care about them and discuss them because we are around to care about them and discuss them. Things have been engaging in homosexual sex for eons but we only care about it now because we are able to care about it it doesn't have homosexuality homosexual sex among species interspecies or intraspecies homosexuality it, it has nothing it means nothing it is nothing it just is but we care we give all these things meaning we give all this bullshit facebook is now using your internet history, browsing history to, to, to give you more targeted ads on Facebook. And, it, and, and then, and then you, you read that story and the outrage of that story. And then you read the story about the coronal mass ejection and how this, this whole thing, this whole dance, SS human experience can be sunk in eight minutes. We've all been nudging this ship for millennia, tens of thousands of years. We've been evolving as humans. And evolving in our knowledge and mastery of, of the laws of physics and mastery of nature and our own planet. And we, we've been doing this for, oh my God, and we're so important. We've done some really cool things. We're at a point where we can realistically look at exploring our solar system and going and landing on other planets, right? And, oh my God, we're so important. All these things, so they matter so much for humanity and our society and, and the economy and, and religion and all this stuff matters so much to our society. But it's all bullshit because, because it can all be over. It can all be sunk in eight minutes. And that some people might view that as it's like, oh man, that's sad, that's sad. No, it's liberating. It's liberating to know that the thing that gives us meaning, the things that give what the reason the things we talk about have meaning are because we give it meaning. We are there to give religion or discussion on religion or discussion on women's rights, a discussion on, on society. We give it meaning because we are. It has no inherent meaning. It has no inherent value. You are not inherently a bad person. You're not inherently backwards. It's just this construct that we have created, we are the ones that decide what it means and how it goes. We get to decide. We get to decide, at least as long as the sun doesn't kill us. And it will one day, unless we get the fuck off this rock. That's why Star Trek 
over Star Wars. All right, let's uh, let's bring it home, baby. Woo, another successful Lefty show. I had a great time today. I hope you all did as well. Happy Thursday. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching, liking, favoriting, and subscribing on YouTube. Helping the show grows, or helping the, the channel grow helps the show grow. Thank you to everybody that, uh, that has been and will share the show with your friends, family, and coworkers. It's easier now. We're on iTunes. Just go to, uh, I, go to the iTunes store, search The Lefty Show, and you can subscribe there. Downloads and ratings are greatly appreciated. That uh, helps with seating and all that stuff. Thank you to everybody. Uh, oh, also, if you're on Android, go to po- uh, leftyshow.podbean.com to subscribe to the RSS feed. Thank you to everybody for donating. I'm raising.com forward slash six four three productions. Link in the description. I'm raising.com forward slash six four three productions. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed. I'm out. Bye. Everybody has affinity for cock.